And that was the warning that Bill Turrell had seen in the deep. He's been monitoring the saltiness of the conveyor as it flows past the Faroe Isles, north of Scotland. This is the, the device we use to measure the salinity uh, in the ocean. These bottles here collect the water the samples that we bring back to the ship to analyze, to calibrate the electronics, which are down here. Um, this package measures temperature, salinity, about 25 times a second as we lower it down from the surface down to the seabed. If the saltiness of the water is dropping, it's a sign that the driving force of the conveyor is weakening. This graph shows the salinity or saltiness of the bottom water. It's the saltiness from 1900 to the present day. Until the 1970s, the salinity had been almost constant. But then it began to drop. After the late 70s, we began to see a freshening of the bottom water. So much so that we, we began to doubt our own results. We took further samples, we checked with other countries who were sampling the same water, until eventually we began, became convinced that this change was actually happening. Turrell had measured the largest and most dramatic change recorded in the era of modern instruments. And there was worse. He took measurements from the very bottom of the ocean, from the return leg of the conveyor. Its flow had fallen by a massive 20%. It's the first changes that we'd expect to see if we thought that global warming was beginning to affect the conveyor belt. Uh, a few years ago, I probably wouldn't have said that because global warming was far more iffy. It wasn't so significant, it wasn't so certain. Now we really do know that fresh water input to the Arctic is increasing. The Siberian rivers are pumping out more fresh water. The Arctic ice sheets are melting and there is more release of fresh water. It's the most fundamental change I've observed in my career. The process that could cut off the conveyor has begun. We don't know where the cutoff point is, we just know we're getting closer to it. I don't think that an abrupt, sudden trip and fall down the stairs is the most likely outcome, but I think that the probability of that is high enough that we should really think about it. The uh, likelihood of having an abrupt change is increasing because of global warming is moving us closer and closer to the brink. We don't know where that is, but we know one thing, we're moving towards the edge. And so I would say within the next 100 years, it's very likely, in other words, a 50% probability that this might happen.